Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is the penultimate video, video number 34. And in these last two videos, we're just going to focus on condensation polymers and specifically polyesters in the next one and nylon in this particular video. You can see that what we're doing is exactly the same thing that we were doing for the addition polymers. So we're focusing in on structure, properties and uses for this time the condensation polymers and this video will focus specifically on nylon. Now there are a number of different interpretations to model. Um, just the way that we've looked at modeling these processes with very simplified um, uh, structural formulae is a way of modeling and you could use that and describe that but I think it's also useful in class to make sure that you've actually had a chance to play with some of the model kits and look at some of these monomers and how they go together. Of course the key difference now that we're looking at condensation polymers is that they polymerize slightly differently to the addition polymers and so we just need a little bit of background before we uh, launch into our uh, look at nylon. So condensation polymers are polymers which are formed by the elimination of a small molecule. So there are two products and that is probably the biggest difference between um, the addition polymerization process and the condensation process. So in addition polymerization you get your polymer. The polymers can vary in their length or size uh, but it's still the same polymer. Whereas when you're looking at condensation polymers, you get your polymer, but you also get these smaller molecules. And often that smaller molecule is a water molecule, uh, which is released um, for each, uh, each two monomers that are joined together. So if you get two monomers joined together and you get one water molecule, obviously if you have three monomers joined together, you might have two water molecules and so on. So we can kind of work out how much of each of these other molecules that we're going to get by looking at the total number of monomers that are joined together. A couple of important differences is we don't break double bonds in condensation polymers. That's not to say that there may not be double bonds present in the structures, but it's just that's not what we are looking at when we're carrying out condensation polymerization. But there are um, other uh, components, perhaps sometimes other functional groups, which are present and which when we um, link the two monomers together will eliminate a particular molecule as I said often water. Now sometimes we may have two different monomers. I better put different there so it's obviously there's going to be more than one monomer. Um, in fact there's going to be a lot more than two but sometimes there are two different monomers and so the different functional groups can actually contribute to exactly what um, is going on in this particular case. So we need to look at some of our functional groups. We know for example that if we have a carboxylic acid, uh, a C double O group, and we add it to uh, an alcohol group, then what we will form is our ester bond. Um, and in the process water will be released. So obviously if we were to add lots of these together we'd have a polyester and we'd have lots of water molecules but that's for the next video so let's have a look at that then. For this particular video what we want to do is focus on nylon and there's a couple of different versions of nylon and nylon can be quite a complex um, molecular structure so um, I think it's probably important that we try and simplify this as much as we possibly can. So as I said there's two different types of nylon that you'll find um, when you look at uh, examples of condensation polymerization and nylon is hopefully a polymer that you would have heard of before that you have some familiarity with. Um, one type of nylon is the polymer of a single monomer unit called 6-aminohexanoic acid. Now, if we think about that, we think about the fact that the um, hexanoic acid is going to be the dominant functional group here, and so it will take an end carbon, and in fact it will also take the place of the number one carbon, that's our um, carboxylic acid. Now, because it's hex, that means there's 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 carbons in this chain and our six amino we know that this NH2 group is our um, amine group but it's not a 
hexanamine as it might be if it was if the functional group of the acid wasn't on the other end if we just had six carbons attached to our amino group then we would probably call it hexanamine unfortunately because the acid takes preference we just describe the amino group at the other end so this is um, an example of an, um, a type of amino acid what this means is that if we can get two of these groups to come together, then what we're going to have is um, a bond that will form where if I just quickly draw an N uh, with my H's kind of here without drawing all the rest of the mess, if you can see that um, part of what I can do is to remove a water molecule here and then um, if I bring this down, I have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, which is then bonded to a nitrogen. And this is my amide functional group. And as that forms, a water molecule is also going to be released. So if I have lots of these forming a long chain polymer, then I have polymerization, then I have condensation polymerization because I'm forming another molecule, which is water. And I also have this series of amide bonds, which are also forming. You may, um, if you're a biologist, have, have had a look at amino acids, not probably one that looks like this, um, but other types that um, also form these, these amide bonds. We tend to call them peptide bonds and um, long chain of amino acids uh, are often referred to as polypeptides. They become proteins as the, the um, secondary tertiary um, folding structures um, come into play. The other um, form of nylon, the one that's probably a little bit easier to reproduce in the laboratory, um, is this um, nylon 6-6. Now the difference between this one and the previous formation of nylon is this actually has two separate monomer units. So in this case we still have an amine combining with an acid to release a water molecule and to form this um, amide bond right here but this time we have two different monomers so we're going to actually be alternating between the monomers as the particular polymer grows so this is um, adipic acid and um, hexamethylamine diamine so you can see from this particular i guess quite complex um, set of compounds um, still things that we can identify so the difference this time is instead of um, uh, carboxylic acid with just a single acid group the adipic acid has uh, an acid group on each end and you can count through so one two three four five six and that's where our hex comes from so it's a, um, a six carbon but this time it's um, a, it's got two acid groups one on each end Likewise, when we look at one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in our um, amine, you can see that it's um, a group which has an amine group on each end of the uh, molecule. So we kind of get a bit of an idea about um, how we name this particular compound, again, just based on the position of these functional groups. When the two come together, a water molecule is released and that's our definition of a condensation polymer and the amide group forms. And you can see that this is going to um, kind of change as we link this group backwards and forwards. And you can see also what's happening here is if we were to look at how um, these two ends that I've just identified, if we were to sort of expand this a little bit, and sometimes if you are using um, two monomer units, you, you have to have slightly more uh, examples. You might remember for our addition polymers we could just use two and show the alternating position of the those extra little groups the, the chlorines or the styrenes or the fluorines or whatever um, here you can see that that actually there's almost like the molecule is flipping backwards and forwards you're getting this alternating arrangement and that's where the six six comes in so we can identify the links between each of the um, monomer units as the polymer is growing 
this is really a fun thing to do in the classrooms. One of the things we want to have a little bit of a look at to see if we can actually reproduce this in the classroom. And I know that um, there's already a quite, a, quite a lot of really nice uh, examples online of, of classes who've been able to actually produce some nylon in the laboratory. Some of these chemicals are a little bit hard to work with though, so we'll have to look and see what sort of options we have to do this. As we've looked at previously, and, and really we, when we cut to the chase, the key things here are the properties, uh, the structure, sorry, the properties and the use. And that's what we've looked at all the way along, and that's what we need to do with nylon as well. So nylon is a crystalline structure. It's, it's has quite consistent in terms of its um, polymerization. Uh, it can be drawn into thin fibers, which makes it really good for using things like uh, in using in things like ropes, but also fibers for the textile industry. It has a very high tensile strength. Usually, that strength is stronger in one dimension, such as sort of pulling it long ways. But if I was to try and sort of um, spread the the fibers uh, in an, in a different plane, I might find that there was a little more weakness in that plane. So um, there is some differential strength that's associated with nylon, but it's fairly rigid um, in terms of its strength. Um, but as you will know from your own experiences of, of nylon, there's also a lot of elasticity, a lot of um, bendability so that we can tie it in knots, we can um, shape it. Uh, and so there's a number of different um, properties of nylon that contribute to its uses. So here's a table you've seen on probably a few occasions now, and now we're down to nylon. So when you're looking at nylon, you might uh, consider that there may be two monomer units that you want to um, identify here. Um, you might look at uh, the condensed structural formula is probably going to be less condensed, and I haven't left a lot of space here for it. So we want to make sure that we've um, identified those key um, functional groups that are going to be part of this particular molecule and of course um, uh, expand that out so that we know where those um, repeated functional groups are and then to list the properties and uses and as we've done before make sure that that one relates very closely to the other. So we're almost at the end we've got one more polymer to look at and that's polyester and then hopefully our table will be complete. Thanks for watching.